So this slide or video discusses the derivation of the conjugate beam method, which is for me the easiest method among the uh, basic methods that were presented or will be presented later, especially when we discuss the energy methods. So we have here the conjugate beam method. And remember that EIY double prime is the differential equation of the elastic curve. It, it is equal to M. And since if we integrate these ones, we have EIY prime corresponds to the slope. Integrating further, EIY, it is now the equation of the elastic curve and that corresponds to the deflection at any point on the beam. So starting with the fictitious or conjugate beam loaded with M over EI diagrams or diagram by parts. So we have EI Y double prime uh, equals moment. We remembered from mechanics of deforma deformable bodies or from statics that the derivative of moment with respect to X is shear. And this shear here corresponds to the shear in the conjugate beam corresponds to the slope of the real beam. So we will show that by this equation. So remember that moment M is the moment M is equal to the deflection. The reason for this is if we begin with EI Y double prime and we replace EI Y double prime by U. So from EI Y equals deflection and EIY prime equals slope and EIY double prime equals moment and if we begin from this replacing Y double prime by U which is the representation for the global displacement so this is equal to moment remember EIY double prime is equal to moment or EI delta so differentiating these ones so we have EIY prime is the derivative of moment and since the derivative of moment is equal to shear and u prime is interpreted as the slope because u prime is slope so therefore ei u prime or ei theta which is the derivative of moment with respect to x corresponds to shear so in short the slope on the real beam corresponds to the shear of the conjugate beam so that's the interpretation Again, the slope of the point on the real beam corresponds to the shear at the same point on a conjugate beam. And the moment, the moment at a point on the fictitious beam corresponds to the deflection of the real beam. So EIU deflection corresponds to the moment at the same point on a conjugate beam. So if we differentiate this further, we have EI quadruple primes equals EI U double prime, which is the derivative of shear with respect to X, and derivative of shear with respect to X is load, and that load is the M over M over EI diagram. So that is why if the load on the fictitious beam or conjugate beam is M over EI diagram, then the slope, the shear, rather, at a point on the fictitious beam corresponds to the slope of the real beam. And the deflection of the real beam, a point on the real beam corresponds to the moment at the same point on a fictitious or conjugate beam. So to summarize, the shear at any point on the fictitious beam corresponds to the slope at the same point on the real beam and the moment at any point on the fictitious beam corresponds to the deflection on the real beam. So in order to master this conjugate beam method, let's have these different cases of constructing the conjugate beam given the real beam. So for a conjugate beam with end supported, simple supports at the ends, so for the conjugate beam, the figure is the same because there's no moment so there's no deflection here, so there should be mo no moment here, so it remains a ruler. 
there should be no uh, moment also at B. There's no deflection, so there's no moment at B. But there is rotation of the tangents at A and B, so there should be shear. So that's why the, the conjugate beam will have the same shape and size and also support conditions. So there is theta A and this is, there is theta B. Next, for this beam, free at A, free at B. So when loaded, definitely A and B will translate at the same time, rotate. So the tangents rotate. So there is delta A, there is theta A, and there is also delta B. And there are slopes at A and B. Therefore, the conjugate beam should replace A and B with fixed supports because fixed supports has shear and has moment. So has shear means has theta A and has moment means has theta B. Has shear at B means has theta B. So there is shear at B. There is moment at A. There is moment at B. So there are def deflections at A and B. So that's, that's why that's the corresponding conjugate beam. Next, for this case here, we have fixed at A, fixed at B. There's no rotation at A. There's no, for the real beam, no rotation at A, no, no deflection at A as well as at B. So it should be free at these two points A and B so that there's no, uh, there's no shear at A, there's no moment at A as well as at B. Next, we have this fix at A, free at B. So there's zero rotation at A and zero displacement at A. So it should be free here at A. Then there is rotation at B. So there is shear at B. There is deflection at B. So there is moment at B. So B should be fixed for the equivalent conjugate beam. The lengths are the same, of course. Then... Another case, so if we have point A and B here, and we have here an interior hinge, so remember that a ruler end support rem still remains a ruler in the conjugate beam if it is an end support because there's no displacement, but there is rotation at A. At B, it becomes free to make it short from our experience above. And this interior hinge here, definitely there is rotation at the hinge and there is also uh, rotation at the hinge at the left and at the right. There is also deflection. So that should be represented by either a roller support or a pin support that makes it still stable. So since this is a roller, this should be a pin, but there are times that this interior hinge can be replaced by, by an interior roll, roller. So we just replace it by a pin to maintain stability of this beam. And as I said, the fixed end becomes free. So next we have here uh, end support at A, which is pin. So in the conjugate beam, it is also a pin. B is free, that's the end, so it becomes fixed in the conjugate beam. This interior roller, so this because this is the real beam, there is only rotation but no deflection. So therefore, a support that has no moment but has shear resistance is an interior hinge. So A remains a pin, then C becomes an interior hinge, and B is fixed. So like that, B is fixed. And we have an interior hinge at C. Then for the next case, we have free at A, so it becomes fixed for its equivalent conjugate beam. Roller B, this, this is the end, so it's also roller. So therefore, C at C, there is no deflection, but there is rotation. So it is represented by an interior hinge because there is only resistance to shear, 
but no moment. So at A, it becomes fixed. At C, integer hints. At B, it remains a ruler. So that's it. These are the different cases. And other cases will have the same form as that. Now for the sign convention, so the sign convention for positive shear, remember that uh, left section, right section, and the right section, it should be downward. Then if we consider left, we consider a segment at the left segment, it should be upward. So that's it. This is the positive shear at the right section, left, right of the segment. At the right section, it is downward. And if we consider this segment here, at the left, it should be upward. That's positive shear uh, sign convention. And we always assume that thetas are always positive so that when we use the conjugate beam, method and the final sign for that shear or for that theta is negative then it means that the we made a mistake in in the rotation only so it is clockwise if it is negative counterclockwise if positive the tangent rotates counterclockwise if it is positive for the sign convention for moment this should be the positive moment smiley so at the left it should be clockwise and at the right the moment should be counterclockwise to produce that bending sense of bending so that's it and i hope that it is clear for conjugate beam remember that um, the shear at a point on the conjugate beam corresponds to the rotation at the same point on a real beam and the uh, moment at the point on the conjugate beam corresponds to the, the deflection at the same point on the real beam and remember also this sign convention for shear and sign convention for moment because these are very important to make sure that the final values will have the correct signs so that's it